All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, evening, dark San Diego tonight. And I'm delighted to be joined by Rish Banderi, who is all the way in Mumbai, India. How are you doing, Rish? I'm doing good, John. Thank you. And you're, of course, coming to me from the future. It's tomorrow where you are, right? Ah, yeah. Tomorrow, early in the morning, I would say. Yes, yes, ab absolutely. Absolutely. And Rish is the founder and CEO at Content Beta, a video design audio studio that's helped uh, B2B software companies create engaging product marketing content to successfully drive engagement marketing, generate more MQL signups and improve win rates. And and you also um, you built content beta from scratch up to almost a million dollars in revenue during the COVID lockdowns, which is quite incredible. And what we're going to talk about today is your your concept, your concept of how you built that business, but also your concept of how you engage with the market and how you um, you know would advise other people to engage with the market because we're all getting bombarded by marketing messages and emails and everything coming at us all cold calls whatever. And you got to have a different strategy to to cut through the noise. So, what what do you advise people to do, Rish? So, I think first thing is cold emails, cold calls. They still work, right? Just that because of the increased frequency, it becomes quite sometimes annoying, and you are not sure what state of mind the other person is. So, sometimes it may not give you uh, the consistently the desired results that you had before. Uh, what uh, what I've been discovering is the huge role of community to to drive brand awareness, to drive uh, leads from people who are your target markets. So I'm not going to say that you go and uh, get active on any community. Just see where your um, ICP is hanging out, where they are talking about their problems, where they are where they are helping each other, or maybe probably looking at their career uh, goals. Um, and I would say just just go there and try to help like a genuine human being wherever you could. And I'm not, not going to say that, hey, always pluck yourself or um, only help people who you think you can get business from. But just try to genuinely help people notice. And if you could become that um, that that prefer uh, like a, a advisor of th that sort mm -hmm. that, hey, this is this is the guy who I can go if I have problem in this area. I think that's a big deal. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you. I mean, that trusted advisor role that we've always been um, looking for. I think the thing today, Rish, is um, when you say, you know, communities where people are hanging out, I think there's a lot more places and different places that where they are today than people realize. Because people always, a lot of times when you're talking B2B, people always think, oh, well, that's just, you're talking LinkedIn. But there are plenty of other places too. Yeah, I think so. Originally, communities and events generally brought like-minded people together. That was pre-COVID, but but Slack and other tools were developed over the last five years, and um, COVID happened, and people started working remote. And I think uh, Slack, Facebook groups are really good source. Reddit, they're really good source of um, communities where you can find your target audience. Yeah, and that's why I was just saying is like you know there's more than than you would think out there. So it's it's up to you to go and figure out where where your customers like maybe they are, maybe they do uh, belong in a Reddit group, and maybe you've never even considered Reddit before. But there's a a great opportunity. Um, and Rish, how much do you think the COVID years? I mean, because it was starting pre-COVID when people were wanting to kind of re-engage and wanting to be more kind of human to human contact. Um. But obviously, the lockdowns really sent that into overdrive. So do you think this is a time when people are actually more open to the concept of community than perhaps they've been in a while? Um, I think so. And and uh, one of the reasons is when people are OK to work remote, uh, you could get the best of the minds. I mean, if you are in say, San Diego, you would get people in and around San Diego, probably from L.A. to join you in an event. Uh, but if you have a remote community, you could get somebody from Helsinki, somebody from Sydney, somebody mm -hmm. from Mumbai to bring their thought of line of thought and new fresh perspective on um, whatever community you are in. 
Yeah, no, and, and I think that's really, and I think that's really important to really have. But we actually did a virtual customer conference at the beginning of this year, and it was fantastic. Uh, uh, and actually, another company from India, um, Zuddle, was the the uh, platform that we used. It was it was fantastic? But again, all all around all around community. But obviously, um, Rich, as you said, if you are going to find where your 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 prospects are, uh, and you're going to find them in their community and discussing things then you have to add value there. You can't just use it. You can't just kind of parachute into the middle and start. It's almost like running into the middle of an event and throwing your business cards at everybody. I mean, you have to, you have to engage and, and, and offer some help or value before you can start uh, even thinking about talking to them about what you want to talk about. Uh, I think doing sales as a, like how an SDR does through cold calls and cold emails is really literally frowned upon. I mean, you can't DM someone, you can't ask them that, hey, look at my website or hey, book a call with me because people are not here to buy something. When you're a salesman, the natural, uh, your your natural language is, hey, how do I get a person on a meeting or how do I convert into a customer? But that's not what these guys are for. Um, and uh, all you got to remember is help them with uh, their problems. If you become, if you if you help them with their problems, they'll start having a conversation with you. One of the cool way which we do is try to create resources. Um, uh, we'll give you an example. So I'm in a community and I see a lot of product marketers, and product mar- marketers will say, "Hey, I'm looking for what are, are there templates for battle cards? How do you write video scripts? Or if I want to run right. ad campaigns, can you, so does it have battle cards? Do you have templates for video script?" Um, what kind of assets do I need for my product launch? Now, if you if you hear this problem consistently, we create a resource. A resource is like curation of multiple data sources, probably something from our internal. So we do video scripts and we have close to 200 video scripts where we have put down, hey, this is a good way to have CTA, this is a good way to introduce a company. And if you give them resources, they would feel that, hey, this, is, this content is enabling me. It's not like... Um, your 10 year old blog where you have have this click 10 things to do in video script but more more valuable something which you would use yourself and if you if you help them with such content which they normally ask for them and basically because it's frequently asked you can use it in different contexts you don't have to always use it for one particular context you can repurpose that um and i think that's that's really helpful because now you are empowering that community member um, to do that stuff himself without relying on external experts. Yeah, you know, I I really like that what you just said there about the fact that now you've made them kind of autonomous or independent and they're able to do it for themselves. And let's face it, there's no better feeling than when you figure out something and you go, okay, cool, now I, I can do this. So now, obviously, I'm going to be I'm going to be very open to you because you just empowered me to to do something for myself. Now I'm willing to talk to you about just about anything. To- totally, totally. Um, I mean, wh- one example which I can throw is uh, so when I sent them this, so we we did like hundred. Somebody asked for what a product demo video should look like, and what we did, we did like hundred a table of hundred demo videos and spliced it down by. Um, what's the call to action, what's the storytelling style, what kind of visuals they use. Um, and then the next comment, I sent them that link, the next conversation was, uh, which one would you recommend for a company like this? And you could see the shift in tone, right? Now you can see that that person actually thinks, because I've seen more than 100 such videos and created that in a table, um, I'd be a better judge to answer his query. Um, and then series of conversation went to DMs and then went to emails and finally they become a, a big customer. But I think the point of the, uh, I mean, the, the fact is um, you got to help them as uh, how you help another human being, not, not try to think that he's a prospect and probably I'll get something out of it. I know it takes some time when you, when you are mm-hmm. frequent in the community and when you contribute um, resources or helping other people, people notice you. I mean, it's not a, they always like you or like how it happens sure. on Instagram or TikTok. But people will notice you. Um, and they may not have a problem today, but they may have a problem next quarter. And that that's how you win the game. Yeah. And, and what I like about what you just said there as well, Rich, is, uh, is that you actively engage. Because here's one of my pet peeves is, is when 
say somebody say you 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 put something on linkedin or whatever you post something and you get great post and i know immediately that person never read the post right that was just an effort <laughs> to to just got to go okay now we're now we got to now we're engaged look i said and and i think that's the key part if you engage in a community or if you engage with somebody's content wherever that is if you read the content and you add to it or you make a comment related to the to the content or the issue that they're discussing in the community, um, then you show respect to the people. You've shown that you actually read the stuff or you've considered it and you're trying to add value as opposed to just sort of trying to get your name in there and get noticed by going, great post. Uh, uh, correct. And I think uh, commenting in on LinkedIn is quite underrated. A lot of people think that, hey, I should post X number of times in a week or X number of times in a day. Um, and then people will think I know something because I, I have a thought leader because I keep on posting good content. Um, but but commenting on uh, other people's content also gives you a lot of visibility. Um, I mean, one one hack which we follow is, uh, so we have, we have a point of view in how do you create content for software companies and how do you create design for software companies. So we search for that kind of content. And whenever we find that, uh, if we search for content which doesn't go with our line of thought, um, right. and then we put up more controversial comment, which is just the opposite of what that person is trying to say, and that gathers a lot of attention. It's not intentional, but we find posts where we could we could be more visible than not. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that's a, I think that's a great point too. Is um, because if you engage in a debate as well, I mean, that's also creating value. Because let's face it, the best you know, critiquing or debating, you know, that tends to on um, tends to uncover more ideas and better ideas sometimes. So that that's another that's another great way of going. Yeah, um, LinkedIn, I think is I mean, LinkedIn is going through a lot of changes, and a lot of time we feel that hey. Uh, comment getting on social media it requires a lot of investment it does actually you've got to be consistent um and very similar to co uh, community posts people people uh, are noticing you they they are not always engaging with your post but they always notice you um and very similar to community um they engage with you when you when there is a need on that their side so i always recommend add people um, not in the automated way, because I think LinkedIn is also looking, uh, frowning upon automation. They don't like people, bots running around to send mm -hmm. invites like a human being, comment like a human being. Um, and I think you're good. Yeah, no, I think, uh, and I totally agree with you. A great comment too is, uh, you know, comment like a human being, you know, act like a human being, be a human being. Um, I think that I think that's, that's perfect because you're right. One of the things I think, that really happened with LinkedIn, especially over the COVID thing, was suddenly people started using it as a spamming tool and like just, you know, spamming. And then my another of my pet peeves, I seem to be getting them all out tonight, is the auto reply. You know, when somebody sends you a lovely connection request and it's personalized mm -hmm. and you think, okay, this person really wants to connect with me. They put a bit of effort into it. And then the minute I accept the connection, ping, up pops a message that's just a sales pitch. <laughs> And I'm like, great, you know, and that's the thing. And again, I, I think LinkedIn has had to do some work or will have to do some work because it definitely became a bit spammy and it even, it didn't even help itself because it gave people tools to be even spammier. <laughs> yeah. And I think AI is also uh, much overrated in that, that space. I mean, a lot of time, I mean, I've seen tools where AI will auto create a comment for you, AI will auto create a message for you, uh, the GPT-3 algo. Um, and then, and then you realize that hey, this is not really personalized. He has just I mean, uh, read my entire profile and rephrased it using GPT three because it doesn't it doesn't sound natural. Um, mm -hmm. And I think yeah, and I think if if you be, I mean, it could work on certain people who are not really active on LinkedIn and maybe they were not aware of how these things work. But most of the uh, sophisticated uh, buyer would always know that. Hey, it's not real. Mm -hmm. And um, where where do you where do you see the future going, Rich? What 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 gets you excited about where where all of this is going, and you know the plans you have yourself? I think future is going to be more um, 
more driven by individual branding, right? I mean, I see a lot of, I, th- I mean, I see a big case for founders or senior professionals at company building a personal brand on um, social media. When I say social media, it includes LinkedIn, Twitter, and even communities. Uh, because when when you are a when you are a brand, um, when you are a personal brand, you are also perceived as a a thought leader, somebody who has deeper insights for the industry, and you don't need a and because of your content-led approach, you don't need a sales-led approach where you've got to um, knock doors, spray and pray. Um, I think personal brand helps you on two fronts. One is um, building brand awareness for the for your for your company, mm. um, and second, if if you are if uh, if you're looking for a career, right? If you want to change career or if you want to um, do something else, I think it's a great way to be visible as an individual. Uh, maybe you want to part in a, participate in a non-profit initiative. Maybe you want to build another product. Maybe you want to do a weekend hustle. Um, so I think personal branding is going to stay a long way. You've got to create good content. You've got to share your experience um, and just and just write it out. I mean, it might feel odd that, hey, if I write it out, then uh, maybe there'll be only two likes or maybe there won't be any likes. It's okay. Just do it consistently. Um, and uh, do your best. I think it always works out. Yeah, and it's interesting what you said about the uh, the personal brand there. Um, and this is something I think salespeople were a bit slow to to latch on to. I think it's about it's it's ten. 10 or 12 years ago, David Meerman Scott, the uh, the great uh, marketing writer, author, world-renowned uh, marketing expert, I was interviewing for him for something, and he said at the time, he goes, you know, nowadays when, when you contact a prospect, you know, that prospect absolutely obviously goes and researches their company, but they also research who you are. And at the time, people weren't really thinking about that. But if you think about it, fast forward, we know that if I if I call call you out of the blue or I send you an email and maybe you're intrigued a little bit, one of the yeah you're going to look at my company, but you're also going to look at me too. So your point about personal branding, I think, is is, is extremely important. Yeah, and because of personal brand, I mean, I mean, it's easier to create personal brand today as opposed to company brand because people connect with people easily. Um, and and uh, I mean, what I I would say what blogging or what uh, uh, like company branding was five years, ten years ago. It's personal brand today, um, mm-hmm. and I'm not going. I'm not not seeing anything that will take it away from personal brand. I mean, personal brand is always going to stay. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's my point. Yeah, and no, I, I agree with you, and I think that's. Um, and I think it's it's even if they even if companies try to control it today, I mean, you can't, can't because it's such a there's such a gray area between like you say, even LinkedIn, like LinkedIn is mine or is it my, or does my company have any control over my LinkedIn profile? I don't know. It depends, you know, company to company, but to your point, I think there's such a blurring of the lines now that you have to pay attention because if you have some other parts of your profile, other social media, that's a little maybe off to the side, a little strange or whatever, you know, you wouldn't want that to infect your overall brand. So you have to be careful, I think, and you have to compartmentalize sometimes. True. And I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn's algorithm also works in the same way, right? I mean, if you are, in, if I make the same post through my company's account and through my personal account, my personal account always gets eight to 10 times more visibility. Uh, not because I'm connected. My company also has, the company page also has good enough number of likes. But because LinkedIn thinks you are an individual and you you your thoughts ought to be heard because companies consider to be more commercially driven, but individuals are yeah. not. So I think I think I think LinkedIn also prefers the same thing. Yeah, and and I think in conclusion, Rish, I mean I think the the message here is like do the work, uh, be personal, be engaged with people, help people. Like you said at the very beginning or before we came on air, always be helping. That's that's your mantra, right? Yeah, I think always be selling was what what was sales ten years ago. Uh, today, if you want to be a trusted advisor, you have to be always be helping. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, all of Reach's uh, information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell us more about you and your companies. So, Content Beta is a video design service for B two B software. 
uh, we had them with the video production, design, audio editing, uh, quite a lot of stuff. And plus, we are on a flat monthly fee, so no, no wondering about unreliable freelancers or expensive agencies. Um, feel free to check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again, Reese, and thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah.